The next step is to determine the type of diagram you'd like to use between two types. And we're only going to talk about two types. There are others, but for this example, we're going to use two types. Activity on the node or activity on the arc, which we'll all explain in one minute. Each has its advantages, but they still accomplish the same thing. It's simply how you'll represent the tasks and when the work occurs. Activity on a node task, or AON, are indicated by circles or boxes inside your diagram and represent a node, as you can see in this example. Make sure that you indicate the duration in the proper time increment, somewhere on your diagram, if it's in minutes, hours, or days, because this will make a huge impact on your, on your uh, diagram itself. The other option is activity on an arc, or AOA, and it's indicated by arcs, or unidirectional arrows, on the diagram. And the nodes represent states of the project. Uh, in this particular example, there's a start and there's a finish, and it'll show where they are in the work. As you can see in this example, the task identification and duration are on the arc, uh, the line itself. And the nodes show the start and end dates. This is a very, very simple example, but a larger project would have different states in the node boxes, showing where they are in their level of completion. After you've determined which type of diagram to use, you need to draw a diagram which shows precedence, labels the nodes, and shows the durations according to precedence. For this example, I've chosen to use the activity on the node type and include the tax and task and duration in each node. Remember, you can use either letters or number combinations for tasks. For a larger project, it may be better to use a number combination, 1.1, 1.2, because you have more combinations available. But for this example, we're going to use uh, a very simple lettering uh, nomenclature uh, for simplicity. As you can see in this diagram, A must precede B, and B can only start after A is completed. If you have tasks that can be done in parallel, you draw the diagram like our second example, where B and C do not depend on each other, but both must be completed before D can be started. As you can see in diagram 6-11 from the PMBOK, it clearly shows the precedence and dependencies of each task in this particular project. And this is a separate example. I'm showing you how to do the precedence diagram. If you get stuck trying to figure out what comes first or what tasks are dependent on another, draw it out like this first so that you can see the relationships. So now let's start creating our diagram.